ability on that, and we see a snipe out from JJ by pulling back since he was close to running right into the artillery barrage, and the bunker is cleared out. And we see commanders dealing a bit of damage here to the munitions point with the observation. And we see another combined German assault snipers, grenadiers and full grenadiers also being covered by mortars. And we see another full grenadier team, a bit odd. At this stage of the game, perhaps some actual grenadiers or some half tanks or something else, but full grenadiers, I know. A lot of casualties being done by a single pineapple grenade, and the commanders pull out, leaving a number of wounded Germans in the wake. And I suspect we'll see another artillery barrage right here in an attempt to knock something out. Probably not going to hit anything. Nope, nothing at all. The Germans having already advanced too fast so they can easily ignore it. And we see the Stuart light tank having been over repaired. The white bar meaning that meaning he can actually take has more health than a regular fresh Stuart tank. Now nine kills to its name, two. Commanders moving in to support. Grenadiers pulling out and we see a second grenadier team trying to move out and knock out the steward with their panther trick. But are now faced with the commanders, but now they do have veterans to free. That means besides their elite armor, besides their self-healing ability, they now also have extra health making them somewhat tougher as well. Well, that is not going to do them much out in the open against the famed British commandos. Panzer Shrek knocking out some of their own cover, not the best at the end, a bit of an oddity with the Panzer Shrek actually. Stuart moving in to support as well, dashing right past them and trying to see what is here. Spotting a mortar and moving in to clear that out, but now Fulks Grandiers are moving in as well, Grandiers pulling back in face of the commandos. Sappers moving in as well and we see the mortars retreating. And we see artillery going off as well, and the sniper being spotted by the tank. And I'll probably be trying to move my tank back and forth a bit to spot the sniper for long enough to actually order the attack. And there we go. Stuart tank kills the sniper. Fulskrant is charging right into the sapper, suffering heavy damage. Although the sappers are doing the same, suffering heavy casualties as well. Fulskrant is are forced to pull back, and the steward goes in quickly to knock out that mortar at the same time I've got a second Cromwell and I'm making my move from the west going to try and conduct an assault on their base since I figure he'll be still concerned with this and won't know what's going on until it is too late and we see indeed Grenadiers moving in after the Stuart light tank and a artillery barrage is called in Raining in on the creek bags in case any further packs are on the way, but nothing like that. Merely doing a lot of damage to the creek barracks. And we have the Cromwells dealing with the Wehrmacht porters and the bunker. Stuart pulling back ever so slightly, but still doing damage to the German troops. But now being reinforced by the commando recon section combo. And finally the Stuart goes up in flames. Having done a lot of damage to the German troops, the venerable Stuart is dead, and a stick grenade from the German infantry knocks out I don't know how many troops, and we see JJ's ace up his sleeve, the King Tiger, his final bit to stop my forces, the venerable King Tiger, Königstiger or Tiger 2. 503 Shredder Panzer up toiling, moving in, forcing my Cromwells to pull back in the face of the high velocity 88mm gun and the very heavy sloped armor. Certainly nothing my Cromwells can contend with. But at the same time, artillery has been called in, causing a lot of damage to any troops nearing there. And this is certainly something you should be aware of. There are many players that love to just call in artillery on front of your headquarters while you're retreating your troops, catching the troops in there. So that is something one has to be careful with, and I certainly took the opportunity there, since a lot of his force is in fact based on infantry, so I could easily cause a great amount of damage to that through a single small artillery barrage. K 
King Tiger advancing ahead. Absolutely no infantry support. I wonder why what could be up. My Crumbles moving in to try and flank the King Tiger. Sappers with Piets moving in as well. And we also have a Firefly, the Sherman Firefly. British variant of the Sherman tank equipped with a 17 pound gun. And the Crumbles are moving in for rear shots. Doing some damage to the Tiger which crushes some of the Bukars. Now it's Piet shots hammering in as well on the rear armor of it. And the Firefly opening in as well. Half damage already done to the King Tiger. Which continues into the eastern area. Commander is forcing back a mortar team. But we see a large charge grenadiers at the fore. And we see a second wave composed of full grenadiers only equipped for the MP40s. Armor forces continuing to hunt down the King Tiger, which looks like it is on the hunt for my 25 pounder gun. Something that can happen to some players when exposed to enough artillery fire, they will lose track of everything else and focus exclusively on the artillery gun to try and silence that which ruined their lives. A sort of variant of shell shock, I suppose. But in this case it means moving in as King Tiger completely unsupported, allowing shots to hide, hit it from everywhere. And had I been the Americans I'd probably have covered it in so many sticky bombs you would never believe it. This is certainly a bad move. The King Tiger should always be supported by infantry and should not be rushed in. It is simply too valuable for that. And it is out knocked out by the Firefly and the False Grenadiers. Moving in as the second wave to try and do something, taking fire from all sides, from commandos, from Firefly, from PS, and all while they're out in the open, not good. Commandos holding the line, 10 kills to their name, although now 12, and now down to 3 men, and forced to retreat since the full grenadiers with veterans of 3 are quite tough and lethal, but now further commandos are moved in, and things are looking ill for the German commander. Barely any infantry left. King Tiger wrecked. And in fact the King Tiger means he will have no manpower income. This was in fact a rather desperate gamble from his side. And it has not worked out. And we hear the GG from JJ. Ha ha. So what can we learn from this match? Well for starters. Be aggressive towards the British. Don't be defensive like JJ. Pull back MG42 teams with only one man. And deeply wounded that's of course very important don't focus exclusively on veteran grenadiers even though it does seem like a charming fort yes they should probably be the main focus of your effort the main force but they should have something else to support them and by the time he got something else it was already a bit too late which was of course a bit tragic don't move in your packs unsupported being another and of course there are many other lessons like Keep that King Tiger supported. Do not rush it in. Do not rush it in. It's only going to end in tears for the King Tiger crew and the machine itself. So I hope you enjoyed this match. And if you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends. This is Imperial Dane saying, oh, I don't know. Cheers.